Hey, everybody. Welcome to my Monday afternoon live. Um, this might become a weekly thing. We'll see how it goes. Um, as long as I have some interesting stuff to show off and a little bit of free time Monday afternoon, I will probably try to do this every week sometime around 3 30, 4 o'clock ish um, central time every Monday. So uh, let's start with this big box right here. I think today we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like 13 boxes. Um, and then if I have a little free time at the end, I will show you some of my upcoming auctions. Um, I schedule them out on eBay and I try to stay like a week ahead. So there's probably um, about 150 books coming up here in the next week that I'll show off um, to give you a preview of what is coming up for auction on eBay. Uh, eBay seller Animal Vet 52 for any of you that don't know. Um, this big box actually came from the UK and look, it came UPS and this is all that survived of the label. And then, yeah, they do have like my address little label up here, but this is all that survived of the original shipping label. Kind of crazy. Thank you, UPS, for also putting this other little extra label on your packages. Otherwise, this one definitely would have got lost. Oops. Better silence that. All right, there we go. Shouldn't get interrupted again, hopefully. Hope everyone's having a great Monday. Um, it is sunny and 65 here in Wisconsin, which is definitely way above normal, but I appreciate the warm weather. All right, let's see what we got. Um, this is a collection of P.F. Westerman. A lot of really pretty uh, pictorial adventure novels. What do we got? Rounding Up the Raider by Percy F. Westerman. Nice binding on that one. Trapped in the Jungle by Mr. Westerman. Let's see. I think this was two different collections that I bought from an eBay seller. It was a Westerman collection and then just another lot of um, pretty bindings. His first ship. Standish gets his man. Rounding up the raider. Oh, this one kind of matches that last one. A sub and a submarine. Definitely uh, very similar bindings. Same publisher, Blackie. Oh, another one that kind of matches. Uh, the wireless officer. Forget if there was 20 some of the Westerman books. The Western Talisman. Again, the spines look pretty cool all lined up. I'll show you some of those after I get a bunch unboxed. Oh, this one matches to the fight for Constantinople. The Mystery of the Broads. The Golden Gleaner. Again, most of these would have been um, adventure novels. For young adults, teenagers, I suppose. The War of the Wireless Waves. Working Their Passage. The Haunted Harbor. Peddler's Pack. Oh, that one's not Western. I'll save those for here in a second. Uh, the Buccaneers of Boya. Love. Oh, that's not a Western. A Western. The Treasure of San Filippo.
and Pat Stobart in the Golden Dawn. So let me just line a few of these up for you. Those would definitely look really great on your bookshelf. Uh, most of these will probably be on eBay here probably in about two weeks. That's kind of my turnaround. I have stuff scheduled for about the next week. Um, it's kind of a lottery what will be up next on eBay. Oh, there's another Westerman, the third officer. Not even sure on the dates on these. That looks like... Um, no date, but I think most of these are from like the 1910s and 1920s. Here we got The Lovely Woman by T.W.H. Crossland. I think this other lot was just a bunch of uh, odd Victorian and Edwardian antique books. The Peddler's Pack of Ballads and Songs. Published in... Uh, 1869. Let's see. Longfellow's Hiawatha. La Dame aux Camalios. French. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Some of these are a little on the rough side. The Language and Poetry of Flowers. That one's really nice. Um, 1881. Guess there aren't any illustrations in there. Oh, there's an illustration. There's a wallflower. Nice little color illustration. Oh, a few of them. Got pansies. Azalea. Pretty cool. The language of flowers. Aloe is grief. Almond is hope. Amethyst is admiration. Pretty cool. Oh, that's this one. This one looks like it's a little on the rough side. Parley's Wonders of the Earth, uh, Sea, and Sky. No date. Ooh, look at that uh, color title page and frontispiece. There's an inscription dated 1849. This one's definitely a little on the rough side. Let's see what do we got? Escape of the ice. Looks like some Arctic exploration. Some octopus illustrations. Geysers of Iceland. Again, just a cool old science geology book. Hobart Grange. Surrey, painted by Sutton Palmer, described by A.R. Hope Minecraft. Minecraft published in 1905. So that one has a bunch of paintings by Palmer. A lot of pretty color plates in this one. Scenery and architecture. Evening Solitude in Oakley. There's another Westerman. The Adopted Brothers. In the Beginning by Norman Douglas. The Plays of Percy. Shelley. 
some of these aren't too exciting. I forget why I bought this lot. Oh, here's a nice one. Cattle Trail by E.S. Uh, Ellis. One's kind of nice. The Great Cattle Trail by Edward S. Ellis, 1894. It's like a cool Western book. The Teacher's Omnibus of Stories to Tell. Across the Two Seas by H.A. Ford. Not sure where that gentleman is supposed to be from. Nice binding on that one. Across Two Seas, A New, Ze New Zealand Tale by H.A. Ford. No date, but I would guess that's 1890s. Cool adventure novel. Nice cover. Let's see, we've got a couple comments rolling in. Beautiful books. Um, I think almost all of these are going to be up for on eBay. Thanks for the question, Stacy. Uh, the story of John G. Patton. He seems very carefree considering someone's pointing a gun at him. The story of John G. Patton told for young folks all 30 years among the South Sea cannibals by Reverend James Patton. Illustrated, published in 1894. Oh, the English at the North Pole by Jules Verne. I'm always uh, looking for more Jules Verne, I guess. No date, and that one's kind of in rough condition, but still pretty cool for being early Jules Verne. Reginald and Reginald in Russia. Young Trawlers by Ballantine. Young Tra uh, Trawlers, A Story of Life and Death and Rescue on the North Sea by R.M. Ballantine, illustrated, published, uh, no date, but 1890s. Nice Victorian binding. Let's see, I already showed that one. Tales of Christian Heroism. Try and Trust. Try and trust, no date, but that one might be 1870s. Nice, pretty blue uh, binding, nice condition. A Sailor Boy's Adventure in the Land of the Sun. What's the Land of the Sun? Is that Sweden? Oh, no, Sweden doesn't have lions, does it? Must be Africa. Or no, that's the Land of the Midnight Sun. A Storm in the Tropics. It was noon, but the black clouds that hung over St. Paul de Londa rendered the sky as dark as midnight. On every side, as far as the sight extended, the pall of sable vapor blooded over the land sea, brooded over the land sea. Oh, the national arms. Again, pretty bindings, but some of these are kind of rough. That one looks like it has some loose pages. The National Arms of the United Kingdom, containing account of the charges of the Royal Shields of England, Scotland, and Ireland, by Reverend James King. Let's see, someone dated 1891. Getting a nice book on heraldry. 
for England, Scotland, and Ireland. Oh, that one's kind of cool. Helmets. The crest lying on a crown. Strictly speaking, our more armorial uh, bearings are confined to charges depicted on the shield itself, but there are generally some heraldic devices born outside, which may be called appendages of the escutcheon. Such are the crest, badge, motto, supporters, mantling. Oh, I like the shields on the front cover, too. Pretty cool. Let's see, we got an ad. I'll give a shout out to um, Puddle Town Bookstore. Um, I bought these on eBay. They have an eBay, which I'm not even sure what their eBay username. I think it's Weatherbury um, is their eBay page. Otherwise, uh, they have a lot of books listed on the website, puddletownbookshop.co.uk. And I think you can find their eBay page there as well. Um, they're usually auctioning off a bunch of books. Usually shipping's kind of pricey. I think this was probably 150 maybe $200 to ship a big box from the UK. 20th Century Poetry and Anthology. And Alwyn. Some of these aren't too exciting. A few of the bindings are kind of nice, but... What do we got? Celebrated Children by Mason. Celebrated Children of All Ages and Nations by Michael Mason, published in 1856. The Golden Grasshopper, a story of the days of Sir Thomas uh, Gresham. That one's kind of a nice binding. Open, you even have the grasshopper up there in the G. The Golden Grasshopper, a, stay, uh, a story of the days of Sir Thomas Gresham, a narrative in the diary of Ernst Werner, etc., etc., by William H.G. King Kingston. No date, but that one's a little earlier, maybe 1860s or 1870s. more it's like a alexander dumas book wordsworth poems for the young that one's a pretty binding and crawford by miss gaskell oh one more herbert strange's annual We'd assume that's just a collection of children's stories. Oh, and science. There was something on the locomotive. Looks like some war stuff. Adventure stories. A little bit of history. Looks like we got a chapter on the flying boat. Adventure story. Book on transportation and the Panama Canal. Pretty nice. All right, let's move that box out of the way. Move some of these books down. I haven't been buying too much on eBay lately. It's been kind of a pain to find anything worthwhile for a reasonable price. Tomorrow I'm going to go check out a couple bookstores here in Wisconsin. Might make a video if I find something interesting. All right. 
right? Mystery, modern mysteries explained and exposed. Modern mysteries explained and exposed in four parts. Part one, clairvoyant revelations of A.J. Davis. Part two, phenomenon of spiritualism explained and exposed. Part three, evidence that the Bible is given by inspiration of the Spirit of God, as compared with the evidence that these manifestations are from the spirits of men. And part four, clairvoyant revelations of Emanuel Swedenborg uh, by Reverend A. Mahan, published in 1855. So cool. 1855 book on um, clairvoyance and religion and Bibles. Let's see what kind of chapters we got in this one. Let's see, part one, reasons for reviewing his work, self-assured claims of the author, his manner, common argument for his inspiration, his scientific principles, his theory of creation. So lots of interesting uh, content. Yeah, this one's great. And I mean, from 1855, it's 100 almost 70 years old. It's pretty special. Yes, yeah, Stacy, you're definitely going to have to be uh, an aggressive bidder. This kind of stuff uh, definitely gets a lot of watchers on my eBay page. But you never know. It might sell cheap. This one came from the UK as well. I've been buying a lot from the UK lately. Usually, I mean, to ship a little book like this is probably 20, 20 to 25 bucks. So it definitely makes it hard um, to find stuff cheap enough, you know, if you got to pay an extra 25 bucks to ship it. So let's see, this one is Sacred L. Uh, Allegories by Reverend W. Adams, published in 1868. And the reason I bought this one, it is a pretty binding. But then also, it's a four edge painting. I think I have three or four four edge paintings in my personal collection. This one, it's a nice little country scene. I'm not sure if they identified what uh, village this is. But pretty decent for four edge. I do wish it looks like you can kind of see it um, under the gilded edges. Yeah, Stacy, this is, uh, I mean, most, let's see, it says a four edge painting of Richmond, York by Stephen uh, C. Smallwood. So I guess it is identified. Pretty cool. Most most forage paintings cost, you know, $500 or more. I think I paid $250 for this one, which is probably pretty reasonable. Got a nice Civil War book, Bullet and Shell. Pretty nice condition. This one's not too rare, but a lot of copies are pretty beat up. Bullet and Shell, War as the Soldier Saw It, Camp, March, and Picket, Battlefield and uh, Beviac, Prison and Hospital by George F. Williams, Illustrated. No date, uh, copyright 1882. Dead to Sergeant's Yell. See if I can show you some of the illustrations of this one. Return to the abandoned camps at Fullmouth. Cro 
crossing the Rapidicon. And again, pretty nice condition. Got the Boys of 1861 by Charles Carlton Coffin. Again, pretty nice condition. I think this one's from the 1880s as well. The Boys of 1861, or Four Years of Fighting, Personal Observations with the Army and Navy by Charles Carlton Coffin, illustrated, copyright 1881. See what the front is be charged through an abatis. Oh, looks like this one has a bunch of maps as well. Looks like lots of maps and illustrations in this one. Fredrickson or Fredericksburg. And again, pretty nice condition. It's a collection of Tarzan books by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan of the Apes. Tarzan and the Jewels of Opar. Tarzan, or Jungle Tales of Tarzan. Tarzan and the Ant Men. And Tarzan and Leopard Men. Tarzan and Ant Men again. Turn of Tarzan. And these aren't too special. I would assume these might bring five to ten bucks a piece. Actually, that one's kind of rough condition, so that one's not gonna bring much at all. And the son of Tarzan. Um, not the most exciting Edgar Rice Burroughs I've ever had, but I think they were pretty cheap, so I bought them. Here we have Aristotle's Last Legacy, Unfolding the Mystery of Nature in the Generation of Man. Uh, that one was published in 1764 in London. Let's see, a treatise contain, um, of virginity, its signs and tokens, and how a man may know whether or not he married a virgin or not, of the organs of generation in women, of the use and action of genital... Uh, probably shouldn't say those words on YouTube, so I'm just going to... Show you the nice frontispiece of Aristotle. Check out the globe and the books, and you got the skeleton illustration and the books. Looks like he has some sort of science instrument in his hands. I don't think this one had any other plates or anything. Again, very cool medical book by Aristotle from 1764. It's pretty special. Thank you. 
at 600 ways to make money. Hey, Grayson, how's it going? Uh, Professor Draper, 600 easy, profitable, and pleasant ways to make money. A, revi uh, a reliable compendium of valuable receipts, recipes for making articles in constant demand and for ready sale. Copyright 1879. Let's see what we got. We got anti rice for iron. We got ginger beer, bitters, blacking for shoes, black color for zinc, liquid bronze, bronzing liquid, bra uh, to stain black brass. We got candy. We got all kinds of candy recipes. Let's see. One second. I'm going to scoop this stuff over. Mm -hmm. uh, we got cement for bottles, chloroform. Corn plaster, cough syrup, more plaster recipes, cough mixtures, cholera mixture, dyes, eggnog, flowers, how to preserve flowers, how to collect uh, the odor of flowers, the cure of fevers, face powder, how to keep uh, worms from fruit. Gilding, glass, gunpowder, gold plating, waterproof glue, hair preparations, artificial honey. We've got some ink recipes. I think this one's from, what did I say, 1879. So cool recipe book from 1879. What did I say? We got inks, we got uh, lemonade powder, we got lemon nectar. Lacquer for brass, lice destroyer, liniment for frostbites, lotion for freckles, lotion for sore, nipples, uh, matches, mosquitoes, oils, oil cloth, printer recipes, printer inks, pastes, paint, crystal painting, tracing paper, Norfolk punch, putty for metals, Pomade, per Persian pomade, rat destroyer, vinegar of roses, sealing wax, sherry cobbler, silvering solutions. This one has it all. We've got toilet soap, solder, syrups, salves, varnishes, wine, etc., etc., etc. Lots of really cool recipes in that one. Yeah, Grayson, this one definitely has a little bit of everything. So there's like uh, cooking recipes and then metalwork, farming, gardening, um, all kinds of cool stuff. 600 recipes total. Hope everyone's having a great Monday so far. savings time my auctions don't end until seven o'clock tonight so i got a little bit of extra time yeah stacy that one's pretty special and i mean it's from 1879 so it's like 140 years old let's see it's like we got two books boat life in egypt and nubia what's up small business girl uh, Boat Life in Egypt, Nubia by William C. Prime, published in 1877. Not sure if this one has any illustrations or anything. Oh, there we go. The Glory of Karnak. Pretty cool book on Egypt. A uh, report on the training system for Navy and Mercantile Marine of England and on the Naval Training System of France made to the Bureau of Equipment and Recruiting U.S. Navy Department, September 1879, by Lieutenant Commander F.E. Chadwick, published in 1880. Pretty cool Navy training book. Um, most of these I bought on eBay. Actually, all of these I bought on eBay. You can find some pretty cool stuff if you're patient. Um, I find a lot of the... Oh, 
forgot to show this one. Um, I find a lot of the books on eBay are way overpriced. Um, so you kind of just got to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll to find any, um, find any deals. Let's see this little book it, uh, booklet, Taking the Waters or Baths and Brunin by a, by a Wellspring, published in 1877. 2,000 years ago, there was discovered a spot now in the midst of a town of Bray, um, Baden-Baden, a hot saline spring, well-known all the English visitors on the upsprung from which the water was gushed without intermittence at a rate of 3 million cubic inches daily. It's a lot of water. Yeah, Grace, and a lot of the prices online are crazy. And I mean, I auction a lot of stuff off. Every day I'm auctioning off 30 books. Um, and I usually make a profit on most of them. Uh, definitely plenty of them sell cheap and plenty of them go kind of crazy. Um, Small business girl, how many books I buy on eBay or I bought on eBay? Um... It really varies. I mean, most weeks I probably buy, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 books. Um, some of them are sets and boxes. One of these has, is a lot of books. And when I buy a lot of books, a lot of times um, half of them are kind of almost worthless garbage. Um, and then I kind of got to do some sorting, some better stuff for eBay, some stuff for the store, some for the bargain bin. It happened in Egypt. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to branch out to buy uh, more books locally, but it's tough here in central Wisconsin. There aren't a whole heck of a lot of bookstores. You usually have to drive two hours to find a bookstore that I can find like some really good antique books at. Tomorrow I'm thinking about going to Stevens Point. There's Blue Moon Books in Stevens Point. Uh, Steve, he's the owner. He usually has a nice selection of antique books. I do want to take another trip to uh, St. Paul to stop at um, the book house in Dinky Town and Midway Used Books. They had some really great stuff. Let's see, Offhand Takens and Crayon Sketches by George W. Burr Bungay. Is that how you say that? Offhand Takens or uh, Crayon Sketches of the Noticeable Men of Our Age by George W. Bungay. I think this one's from 1854. A uh, really nice lineup of um, contents, Daniel Webster, Henry Clay, John Charles Fremont, William H. Seward, John C. Calhoun, Lewis Cass, Henry Ward Beecher, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson. I think most of them are um, American statesmen, what, but you also have some authors. It looks like Washington Irving, Whittier, Horace Mann, P.T. Barnum. Samuel Houston, William Makeby Thackeray, Horace Greeley. Let's see if I can get that in the shot for you. Winfield Scott. Etc. 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 Do I have a book off the top of my head? That was the biggest find. Um Let's see, my biggest find, I'm trying to think. Let me think about it a second. Hmm, my biggest find. You know, I really can't, nothing really comes to mind. 
I did uh, buy one book collection from a guy in Chicago. I think it was his father-in-law's books. Um, and I found a forage painting, so that was pretty cool and unexpected. Oh, let's see. Got a nice clump of books here. got to the center of the books. Holy buckets, these are wrapped up Fort Knox. All right, what do we got? We got the breadwinners. Don't think that one's too special. A social study. Looks like just a Pretty standard novel. Oh, I got a junky leather book. This is one of the lots I was telling you about that um, sometimes you'll buy a lot. I forget. This one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like 14 books in this lot, and I think most of them are going to be junk. Artemis Ward, His Travels, Volume 2. Published in 1866. Oh, American History for Schools. I always do really good with American History books, that one. Eh, kind of the front cover's a little wobbly. And usually when you buy boxes of books, it's kind of a crapshoot whether how it's going to work out. Cape Cod by Henry David Thoreau. Um, a lot of times they only show you a few pictures. Usually they show you the spines and the covers um, so you don't overly know what you're getting. But I guess sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I'm hoping this next book here is in good condition. If I can get it unwrapped. There we go. We got Polite, Light, and Etiquette. That's a good one. Hopefully the condition. Yeah, the condition's pretty nice. Polite, Life, and Etiquette, or What is Right and the Social Art by Georgine Corey Benham. Illustrated, published in 1891. And again, the condition's pretty nice. Uh, got the nice gilded edges. Covers are pretty solid. I mean, if this one was kind of a beat-up copy, I think it'd be worth about 20 bucks. But being such a nice copy, it's probably worth, I don't know, hopefully this one will bring 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, I get a lot of calls. Um, people wondering what their books are worth or they want to sell. Sell the books in Grandma's Attic or something. Hiawatha by Longfellow. That one looks like a pretty nice copy as well. I always appreciate when they decorate the front and rear cover. Makes it a little extra special and again pretty nice condition on that one mm, that one's kind of junk might sell it for decoration oh what's that the life of someone but again kind of not the greatest condition life of empress josephine for josephine first wife of napoleon by pc headley Circa 1890s. Um, at some point, I need to start putting together some lots of uh, shabby chic books for decoration. We have so many boxes of junky books in the back. All right, looks like we got a nice little German Bible. Die by bed. Uh, published in 1899 in New York. That one's uh, not too bad. That'll go on eBay. 
Again, eBay seller animal at 52. Most of these will probably be up probably in about two weeks from now. Charles O'Malley, that one is kind of junk. Yeah, I think this uh, listing on eBay, they just had a picture of the spines, I think. So, you know, sometimes you can tell a little bit about the, um, the condition of a book just by seeing the spine. If it's really worn, um, if, it's a re if the spine's really worn and uh, has some fraying, then the binding might be loose. A Brief History of the U.S. by Joel Dorman Steele and Esther Baker Steele. Copyright 1885, and I'm sure this one is nicely illustrated. Hopefully it has some maps. There we go. Got a nice color map right there. You can tell I've been passing about This is a map to illustrate the Civil War. So I'm sure this one goes back to exploration, settlers, uh, the French and Indian War, the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, all the presidents. Settlers and pioneers, etc., 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 Native Americans. In pretty decent condition on that one. Oh, a couple more. Madame Delphine by George Cable. Junk. And the Prince of the House of David. Again, if that one was in better condition, it'd be a little more exciting, but it's kind of on the rough side of condition, so junk. Not junk, just not good enough to put on eBay by itself. Here we go. Here's a pretty set of books. Famous Fiction Library. Uh, this has a bunch of different titles and author. Who Wins by May Agnes Fleming. Cast by the Tide by Dora Delmar. Ache Inside by Mary J. Holmes. A Love Comedy by Charles Garvis. 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 Ishmael by E D E N Southward. Oh, that's just volume one. Stance as a woman, or staunch as a woman by Charles Garvis again. The Baronet's Bride by May Agnes Fleming. I don't think I've ever seen these. These are the Famous Fiction Library by the New York Book Club. I don't think I've ever seen uh, any of these before. The Duchess by the Duchess. There's uh, Ishmael by Southward, Volume 2. Self-Raised by Southward, Volume 1. Let's see, is there another self-made? Oh, here's self. Oh, Self-Raised, Volume 2. Got the red binding on that one. Inez by Augustus Evans. Led by Love by Charles Garvis. Dora Dean by Mary J. Holmes. Lena Rivers by Mary J. Holmes. Faith's Gartney Girlhood by A. D. T. Whitney. Elsie Dismore by Martha Finley. Golden Gates by Bertha M. Clay. And last but certainly not least, The Rifle Rangers by Captain Maine Reed. Last box, and then I think I'm going to show you over there uh, some of the upcoming auctions, give you a little preview of what we have coming up here in the next week. Here's a bunch of volumes um, from a set of, I think this is the Chronicles of Canada. 
I've had a bunch of the Chronicles of America ones. These are kind of a limp leather binding. What do we got? We got the fighting, fighting governor, the war chief of the Ottawas, the United Empire Loyalists, the Great Fortress, the passing of New France. I think that one's actually um one of the volumes in the Chronicles of America as well. The Fathers of Confederation, the War Chiefs of the Six Nations, Adventures of the Far North, the Patriots of, is that 1837, I assume? The Jesuit Missions, All Afloat, the Red River Colony. Again, I think that these are all from... Um, Chronicles of Canada set. Uh, the Caribou Trail, Tecumseh, Pathfinders of the Great Plains, The Day of Sir John MacDonald, The Adventures of England on the Hudson Bay. Very decent condition as well. Some of these kind of seem like they have moisture staining. Uh, Pioneers of the Pacific Coast, The Winning of Canada, The Day of Sir Wilfrid Laurier, The Fathers of British Canada, The Family Compact, The Great Intendant, The Signors of Old Canada, and Founders of New France. All right, well, I'm going to pull you over there, turn the camera around, and show you some of the... Uh... Actually, no, I'm not going to turn the camera around. Um, show you some of the stuff we have coming up on eBay here in the next um, seven days. And let me kept, catch up on some of the comments. What uh, do you sell on eBay, Grayson, or where do you sell your stuff? And yeah, the famous fiction library, I'm going to sell those one at a time. Some of them are kind of in rough condition, so I will sell those locally for cheap. Um, let's see, start up here in order. We got Chit Chat. We got My Lady of the North. What's your uh, eBay seller name, Grayson? I really like these household guides. Um, they have everything on cooking and gardening and farming and laundry, woodworking, crafts, embroidery, all that stuff. I only have volume one through three. I think that would have been from a four volume set, so it's not complete. Got a Scientific American Encyclopedia of Recipes, Notes, and Queries. That's a really cool science book that has everything. Okay, Graco 205. I'll definitely check you out. See if you have anything I might be interested in buying. Got a nice two volume set, Mark Twain, Innocence Abroad. Got some cool Civil War novels, some pretty little bindings here. These are kind of nice. These are from the Christian Her um, Christian Herald Library, 1897. Got a nice four volume set of Little Dorrit by Dickens. That's 1866. We got some Sir Walter Scott, some more Sir Walter Scott. We got a nice Pilgrim's Progress. This one has some nice color plates in it. Got a few Roosevelt books. We got a nice Don Quixote. I like got one. Got a really nice uh, leather Bible. I think this one's from 1859. Big, beautiful Bible. Uh, got some Wizard of Oz. Got some Civil War books. We got some Francis Parkman and History of New England. Um, I guess that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. See you next Monday.